This is Naomi Brussel for Out FM, and uh, I want to tell you about the situation of Ashley Moore. Ashley was a 26-year-old black trans woman, and she was found dead in the street in Newark, New Jersey, in April of this year. The circumstances of her death are just coming to light, and today we're going to be speaking to her mother, Starlet Carbon, as well as to Beatrice Simpkin, who is the director of the Newark LGBT Center, and Denise Hines, a member of the center's board. And we're going to be talking about this death and their demand for a police investigation of how Ashley Moore died. So uh, let's begin with you, please, uh, Starlet. Again, uh, my deepest condolences to you and your family for this horrible uh, circumstance and for finding out about the death in such a terrible way. So tell us what happened, how you found out that your daughter had died. Well, um, to cut to the quick of it, um, I found out that my daughter died um, on Facebook. So the circumstances surrounding that was, um, I'm a nurse, I'm a travel nurse. Um, I reside in Massachusetts, but I was on a travel assignment in Burlington, Vermont at the time. And I was at my medication cart, uh, administering medications to my patients and decided to take a break and send Ashley a quick happy birthday, um, something I do every year, um, post on social media, tagged Ashley in the post, happy birthday with an old photo of us at the beach, um, me kissing Ashley on the cheek. She was probably, I wanna say 12 at the time. So I posted that, tag Ashley. Um, and the caption read something like, um, thanking God for preserving us, happy birthday to my firstborn. Posted it, um, and then um, something told me to just click on, click on Ashley's profile. So I clicked on Ashley's profile, and I, saw, I see all these images and all these messages that say, happy, happy birthday, RIP, message after message, RIP, RIP. And so I'm standing there in my uniform at work, and I'm, I'm perplexed, I'm confused, because RIP means rest in peace and my child isn't dead. Um, so I'm reading the messages and I'm reading the messages and it's, oh my gosh, um, I'm still heartbroken. Um, I'm so sad that you're gone. And then I start to panic because realization and truth are starting to wash over me. But, um, that can't be. I, I, my, my body was reacting as if it were true, but my mind wasn't really accepting the fact that my child can possibly not be here anymore because it was April 9th and uh, it was nine days past April Fool's, so it can't be an April Fool's prank. This is the conversation and the dialogue that I'm having within myself. So um, I run out of the facility through my keys, I don't know. I run in my car and I start messaging people on Facebook that are posting and I'm asking them, who are you and why are you saying rest in peace? Um, and then someone on Facebook said, I'm so sorry for your loss. I said, what do you mean you're sorry for my loss? What are you talking about? And I'm calling at this point, I'm calling Ashley's phone, I'm calling Ashley's phone, I'm calling Ashley's phone, and Ashley is not responding. Um, so turns out that my child did die, and I found out that my child died on April 1st, and it was April 9th. And so that's how I found out. And what was the next thing that you did in that situation? So then I drove back to the room where I was renting, um, which was about a 10 minute drive. And I just fell apart. I'm yelling, I'm whelping, I'm screaming, I'm yelling. Um, finally, the person on Facebook via messenger got back to me and said, um, here's somebody you can call possibly and ask, ascertain some answers, get some answers. And it was, um, Elaine Helms from the Rain Foundation. 
I called. Um, she didn't answer. She called me right back. And um, I'm again, I'm on the phone. I'm hysterical. I'm inconsolable at this point. Um, and I'm asking her, what, what, what do you know? Someone told me to contact you. Can, you. can you help me? Can you help me find some answers? People are saying that my child is dead, but no one called me to tell me that my child is dead and it's nine days later. Can you help me find out the truth, whether this is real or is it a hoax? What, what's going on? And so she does and she calls me back and she says, I'm so sorry. Um, I have found out that um, Ashley did die on April 1st. And then she proceeded to give me numbers of the um, Essex County coroner's office, examiner's office, as well as a detective um, from the Newark police department's name and number to contact. So you did make those contacts? I, I, yes, I, I, I called them, yes. And what were you told? I was told by, what was his name? Um, an officer Bullock, who was in the robbery division of the Newark police. Um, basically he read everything that was on the police report, which I was later sent. He told me that Ashley had died on April 1st between the hours of 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. And that the, um, the doctor at the hospital suspected that he was, she was struck by a vehicle. And then you did further inquiries. I did. Um, I honestly, the majority of the information that I ascertained was from friends on Facebook. So um, the contact, like I said, that linked me with Ms. Helms also told me to contact um, the last person that Ashley was photographed with on Instagram. That person gave me that person's name and Facebook contact information. And I reached out to that person. Um, that person was um, another tenant living at the YMCA, which subsequently was where Ashley was living and paying rent. I reached out to that person and that person gave me a little bit um, information as far as the events that occurred approximately, I'd say, 12 hours prior to Ashley's passing. And were you able to get in touch with the medical examiner in I Newark did. or I, with the coroner? Was there a coroner's report? What happened? I called the medical examiner, and this was all on April 9th. I called the medical examiner, and I said who I was. And um, they were hesitant to talk to me because they didn't know who I was. Um, but eventually someone um, that said that she was the examiner, she was the investigator for the coroner's office. Um, her name was Brittany. She um, said to me that they did have a male, a black male body um, in the office that is possibly um, my child but she wasn't sure that I would have to call back um, and speak with someone in another division of the coroner's office. It, I was all, it was all very confusing um, in order to ID the body, but that didn't occur for a couple of weeks after that. So you did go to identify the body of your daughter? No, I was not able Who to. Identify? We were, Who did that? We were, on, we were on lockdown. I was not able to leave the state of Vermont. Oh my goodness. I was not able to leave the state of Vermont. Wow. So, um, let's see. On April 12th was when I ID'd my child's body through the WhatsApp on my phone. How horrible. So, it was yeah. a black and white photo of Ashley's face, just, just the face, just the head. Just, just her head. And um, I was also at work because that was the only time that they were able to speak with me and make arrangements for me to identify my child. So on my lunch, and, break, on my lunch break. So have you any more information about how she died? Do you have any 
you, you said something. Uh, I you did an earlier video with uh, Jasmine Singer and talked about uh, some marks on Ashley's neck, something like that. Correct. So um, after I was introduced to Beatrice Simpkins. Um, who lit a fire under the police department um, because prior to that point, they were not willing to send me any information or give me any information. So after that, I received a police report in the mail, whereas prior to that, I was told that I would have to come to New Jersey and get the police report. So then they sent me the police report and in the police report, there is a um, detailed description of who you know arrived on the scene the time how ashley's body was found um ashley was found outside the ymca face down on her stomach and um it states that there were ligature marks on her legs her lo the lower part of her legs her lower extremities and that her neck was grossly swollen and disfigured So uh, what happened to her body then? So the police report states that um, someone contacted a guard in the YMCA and alerted the guard that there was a body laying on the outside of the sidewalk. And then the guard noticed that Ashley was lying outside on the sidewalk, called 911. Police arrived. They attempted CPR could not revive Ashley. Ashley was taken to University Hospital where Ashley was pronounced dead by a Dr. Moynihan, I believe. And according to the doctor in the hospital, the doctor in the hospital suspected that based on what Ashley's body looked like, that she was possibly struck by a vehicle. But unable to determine that because that would be up to the medical examiner. So that's what's read in the police report. Okay. So the, so her body went to the medical examiner. You have, you have the report from the medical examiner. I yes? do not. I have the initial you don't. report, but not the, not the report of the medical examiner. I do not. No, ma'am. I don't. And so this is this is four months later, you still do not have the report. Correct. And I, um, I was told, well, well, the way it works in, in medicine and nursing, that if you don't have documentation, it didn't happen. So I was told that legally, my child is still alive because I don't have a death certificate. And then after, after the examination by the medical examiner, examiner what then happened? to your child's body? So I was told the autopsy was done, that they were gonna to do toxicology, that they were gonna do everything. I don't have, again, any of those reports. Um, I called for about two weeks. Ashley's father called for about two weeks. We were told by the medical examiner's office that they would notify us. They didn't, I had to keep calling them. Um, to this date, no one has actually called me. Um, as to when, Ashley's body would be ready for release, meaning pickup by um, a funeral home director or what have you. Yes. So um, that took place at some point. That took place. Um, we arranged for a funeral director to go and pick up Ashley's body once I identified Ashley. And um, the funeral director came, picked her up, and she was cremated. Okay, so that's 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 the situation at this point. The investigation has not taken place, as far as you know. And I, Beatrice Simkin, can you say something about w the involvement of the Newark LGBT Center and what steps you took to try to help make this come to light and, and make an investigation happen? So I was contacted by Jasmine Singer and she's the one that put uh, uh, Starlet and I together when she told me what had happened and I reached out to Starlet. And so the first thing I did, this was, this was around June 29th, June 30th. So what I did was call, the Newark Police Department does have a group of 
uh, LGBT liaison officers who are working with the LGBT community. We've been working with them for two years, along with some other LGBTQ organizations to create a, uh, a, a quality training uh, for their for the police department when it comes to dealing with LGBTQ people and the community, especially people of color. And so we've been doing that work for two years and, and, it, and it was good work and, and, and they've been very helpful. So I contacted one of those police officers. I talked to the Lieutenant. What surprised me when I spoke to him that he didn't even know that there, this, that Ashley had died on the streets in Newark on April 1st. He, he, he said in Newark and I said, yes, in Newark on April 1st, knew nothing about it. He uh, immediately started asking questions and within 24 hours, he, he had kind of elevated it to his, I guess, commander level and was able to get the police report, discuss the police report with me and um, let me understand that the investigation really did not was an act of past that evening, let's put it that way. There are, when I first spoke to Starlet and she told me where this happened, I knew myself that there were traffic cameras right outside that building. I used to go to the gym at the Y. So I knew the area very, very, I'm very familiar with it. I used to live near there. I used to go to church around the corner from there. So I knew there were traffic cameras all in that area. And so to me, why was it a mystery? Because they should have had film. And so they did not look at the film until June. And so he, he, he basically said that they, were, they did not look at the cameras. When they did look at the cameras, you see that there was nobody on the ground. And then when the camera pans back, there's a body on the ground. There's no traffic accident, there's no vehicle, there's just Ashley. Um, and so when I also told him that the family needs to get the police report immediately because you guys have been stalling them since April and I would like this elevated to a higher level. I said, because something needs to be done about this. The, the, the family's being completely disrespected and disregarded. The, the LGBT community is being disrespected and disregarded. There's no press coverage. No one's contacted anyone in the LGBT community. None of the leadership, none of the organizations. None of us knew about this. And so he, he said he would express my, my concerns to the higher ups and that someone would be contacting Starlet. So my expectation was that someone um, beyond the, the, the investigating officers someone in command uh, at a higher professional level would be contacting the family, first of all, to apologize for the fact that they never even contacted them to let them know that Ashley had died in Newark. And that was my expectation um, when I, when I, you know, this all happened within like two days. And so shortly after that, uh, Starla did get a copy of the police report and she did get a phone call but she got a phone call, I believe, from a, and Starla, you can correct me if I'm wrong, from a detective. Correct. Not from leadership, mm -hmm. not from command, from a detective. I don't think that conversation went well at all. I think that conversation uh, left Starlet feeling even more disrespected. And so, and there was no real commitment to finding out what happened to Ashley. And that's what we need. We need commitment to finding out what happened to Ashley. Uh, I want to bring in John Riley, uh, who is also a member of our Out of Fem Collective, because he has a couple of questions he wants to ask. John? Yeah, I was wondering, was the cremation at the order of the family? How did that happen? I, we, we were told that once... Um, the medical examiner was done with the body that they needed to have the body gone. And apparently there were a lot of bodies in New Jersey. Um, and that it was in the midst of COVID. Yes. Yeah. And um, basically I needed to pick up, pick up the body. I need to make arrangements to pick up the body. So we did that. We contacted and um, 
I was just trying to figure out, okay, how are we going to do services? Do I need to come? I was told, well, no, you can't come and there will be no services. The body must be cremated. Everybody's body's being cremated. There's no burials. Nobody's going in the ground. That's it. So that's what I did. I contacted a funeral home and that, that's, that's what occurred. Okay. And also, uh, the, a lot of these like reports sound very contradictory. You know, on one hand, yeah. they were hit by a car. Uh, and on the other hand, they were, uh, had ligatures on their leg, you know, like marks from yes. being tied up. And then strangula yes. strangulation marks, it sounds like. So how, yeah. how is it not like a homicide investigation? Well, you know, that, that's what makes this all very curious. Um, they, they never went into, ad, well, uh, look, look, let me not say that. They, they did say, I believe, Starla, they did tell you that they actually went into her room because she lived in the Y. Yes, she paid rent. But they, they took nothing. They, they didn't take her cell phones. They didn't take her clothing, her personal items. Everything was left there as if, it was just another dead black trans person in the street and we're just we're satisfied with that Clean it you know, up we're, we're not going to put any more effort into it we're just gonna accept it as that and b wasn't there some speculation on on their part that she had possibly fallen from the roof correct that is what that <laughs> that was the conversation between myself and detective bullock so initially in april Detective Bullock stated that we think the doctor thinks it was your daughter was possibly hit by a car. So after speaking with Beatrice, the conversation then became, well, the according to the police report, this is what the, the, the detective said to me over the phone. According to the police report, um, Ashley's injuries are consistent with someone who fell from a great height. Now, <laughs> according to the police report, I read, and I already told you what I read, ligature marks on the legs, neck grossly um, swollen and disfigured, um, not to mention um, rectal bleeding. Mm. That is also in the police report. Now, um, Ashley lived on the third floor of the YMCA, and in the police report, the witnesses, the witness that they interviewed, the police interview stated that they saw Ashley running down the stairs and out the door, which was supposed to be locked, but for some reason wasn't locked. So I was confused as to why the police department were trying to lead me into a belief that my child jumped or fell from some great height um, where on the actual police report where they interviewed the person, the person said the exact opposite of what he was telling me over the phone. This, this is obviously a situation that needs more investigation. I mean, it's, it's, it's blatantly obvious. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit before we close this and we're going to, we're going to keep in touch with you, but Maybe we can say something about what your what actions are being taken at this point to try to get a legitimate investigation of what actually happened to Ashley and how she died. So the Newark LGBTQ Center is um, um, advocating on behalf of the family. We have um, made arrangements to get legal representation for the family. Uh, they definitely need an attorney because they're just not getting any straight answers and, and, and people are not responding to them the way that they should. And so we did uh, reach out to uh, uh, some um, black justice organizations, trans black legal uh, law center. We reached out to Lambda and we were able to secure a legal representation for the family. Jasmine has started the GoFundMe page in order be, to help um, help in that particular area. Um, Starlet was not working for some time, and now she's just starting to work again. And so it is unreasonable to think that you know the family even has the resources to to be able to hire an attorney or to get you know legal representation. And so the the Newark LGBT Community Center is doing everything we can to make sure that happens. We've sent letters to the chief of police, to the director of public safety 
to the city of Newark, to the y, uh, YMCA, um, requesting that they preserve and protect all evidence, all video, all audio, um, any mm -hmm. documentation concerning what has happened with the investigation up to this point, that, that that evidence be preserved because the family would like to review it, uh, photographs, um, all that stuff. And Starlet also sent the same, this, her own letters directly to them. We're getting the records from a university hospital, the medical records. And our intention is to put pressure and press on the Newark Police Department division to to thoroughly investigate the death of Ashley. And how do people get to the GoFundMe? Is there? Uh, yes, we have a website. Um, you can go to justiceforashleymore.org. That's justiceforashleymore.org. Okay. Uh, you, can also, to... you can also go to the Newark LGBTQ Community Center's um, website and facebook page and our facebook page and you can find the gofundme link there along with the youtube video of uh, jasmine's interview with starlet and myself okay I, I unfortunately we're we're out of time right now but we will keep following up with you and we want to stay in touch with you please stay in touch with us um i've been speaking to Starlet Carbon, the mother of Ashley Moore, also to Beatrice Simkin, the director of Newark's LGBT Center, and to Denise Hines, the, uh, who is the member of the board of the Newark LGBT Center. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's very important that people know about what's happening, and we need to get the word out as far as possible into the, in, not just into the queer community, but into the general community, because people need to know that this kind of action, this kind of inaction is happening. This kind of negligence is happening. Uh, and it's not just happening in Newark, it's happening in other places as well. But this is certainly a situation we need to investigate. So thanks again for coming on to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. This is Naomi Brussel for Out FM.